So as always, the first thing is to wedge. All right, and I guarantee that wasn't enough wedging, but I wanna kind of show you what happens if you don't wedge enough. So the first step is to kind of flatten your piece out with just your hands. You have to get it to a manageable thickness here. All right, and then if you have a rolling pin, that's really the best way to do this. But not everybody's parents are going to let them use the rolling pin. So you can also use things like a water bottle or like a round olive oil bottle, salad dressing, something like that. All that stuff will work. Um, as you're rolling, you'll find that it stops moving. Like no matter how hard you push, it's not going anywhere. And that's because it digs into the fibers of either canvas or wood or whatever you're using. So it gets locked in. So you have to flip it like that. Oftentimes I'll flip it and turn it so that I can get a little bit more width. And with bottles and such, you're really working from the center outward. All right, so once you start getting thin, this isn't a necessary step, but it's a really good idea. This is just two paint sticks, and it makes about a quarter inch, which is a great thickness for small flab stuff. So if you put these risers on either side, then you can't get weird low spots and such. Like if you don't have these, it's really easy to like go really thin on one edge. You can see I've got that big divot in there now. So it's nice to have these risers. Whoa! <laughs> that was funny. Can you see there's an air bubble right there? I don't know if you're able to see it, but I'm going to try to shine a light on it. Heck. Okay. Can you see that air bubble right there? I'm not wedging enough. Um, if I take and just you poke a hole in front of it, trying to go into it, and you can just kind of roll it out of there. But that's how you know you haven't wedged quite enough. Okay, so now I have it all rolled out. And the next step is to cut my shape. And I'm just going to do a really simple little box today. Because you can get really complicated with slab construction. So you put it together like you would a piece of wood or... All right. So that's the first step is to get two sides, and then you want it to be equal all around. So if I measure this side and I put my thumb to the distance, then I can come over here and mark the same distance so that I get straight lines. You can also use the edge of the ruler or whatever you're using. And if it's lined up with this line, then this line will be square, meaning that's a 90 degree right there. Just makes things easier. Also, save your bits, because you never know when you're going to have to patch something. All right, so the next step is to do something like this. And you see I use my thumb against to measure this distance. You just pop them out. But if I use my thumb there, then I can use it here. And I guarantee that everything is the same, same size. All 
override, all right? So now, the way that I did this, I'm thinking of it like a cardboard box. You know, if you break down a cardboard box, it opens up to all these flaps and pieces. So now I'll start to kind of bend this into shape. And you can see how it's going to make a box. So that's the basics of that. I'll fold it back out. Um, and then you have to score with slab construction, especially you have to do the score and slip. So you want to score all your edges wherever you're going to have a joint. I'm going to use my fancy tool, but the needle tool works just as well. And then you get your handy jar of slip that we made before. And so you add slip to all your joints. It's easiest if you do these all at the same time so that you don't have to stop. Because when you have only one joint folded, it can be pretty unstable. So if you do them all at the same time, you can go quickly. All right. And then to put them together, you just sort of press and you kind of move them up like a zipper. And if you're doing it right, then slip will come out of the edge as you press. You'll see with this one. So you can see it squish out. And that's how I know I've got a decent joint. And then if you smooth everything together, it just seals it and makes it much more likely to survive. And last, all right, so now I have kind of a wonky box. You can really shape things now. At this point, you can turn it into whatever shape you like. If you're trying to get very straight walls, you can use the ruler and just kind of compress the clay by pressing it into the ruler. And you hold it and snap it off. So you can see you get really hard, really good edges that way. And you can also get nice sharp corners if you like. So the next step is to go in and with a pencil or a small wooden, like a chopstick, something like that, go in and seal the insides of these corners. So you don't want to see any cracks. Once you're done, the joint should be really solid. Okay, so there's the box. Now I'm going to make little handles for the box. And the handles can be thinner than the main construction, so I roll it out a little bit. Like so. And then, of course, you have to score. And then you score on here where you want the handle to go. Make them have a little curve. You'll see what I'm talking about. It just feels good on your fingers. OK, and then back to your slip. Like slow. And then you bend. And then you put thumbs behind, fingers up front, and press. And again, you'll see the slip squish out. And then this is another good spot for like a pencil or an eraser. So you want to make sure that's sealed really well. And again, repeat. So now there's a little box with handles. And if you've made your joints right, you should be able to put some weight on it and it won't break even though it's still wet. So that's like the very basics of slab construction. Other ways to do slab